and welcome to this first tutorial video that I've done for this channel and this one is a question or was prompted by a question from one of our TB10 group members who asked what was the best way to get a VFR route into the panel mounted Garmin GPS and I think this is actually a really valid question as I think there's quite a lot of these that are installed in aircraft that really don't get as much use as they could. And actually they're a really good resource because obviously it's a certified uh, unit, has an external GPS antenna and they're highly reliable pieces of equipment. So what we're going to look at in this video is how to get a route from your chart um, into the flight plan of the GPS navigator. So let's go ahead and get started and show you how to do this. So the first thing we're going to do, because obviously we are good aviators, is we're going to draw the VFR route onto our half mil chart. And uh, the route that we end up with here is uh, going from Kemble uh, to Newquay and the points that we're going to route via are Froome, uh, Clapworthy Reservoir, Barnstable and then to Newquay. But obviously the challenge that we have here is that Froome, Clapworthy Reservoir and Barnstable won't be in the GPS database uh, as it stands. So what we want to do is be able to load these as waypoints into the navigator, which is the main part of this tutorial. So in order to place our turning points, which are the towns of Froome and Barnstable and the VRP of Clapworthy Reservoir into the GPS, what we need to do is get their lat and long positions, which we can do by either manually getting them from the chart and measuring their positions and writing them down, um, or I'll show you a quick way we can do this um, via another website. There is another way of getting these um, positions into the navigator as a user waypoint and that's to use a radial and distance from a waypoint that already exists in the GPS database such as a VOR but I'm not going to assume any um, knowledge of radio and navigation for this tutorial so we'll just stick to getting the lat and long positions. One of the things that I found when I was starting to put this tutorial together was that tools such as Google Maps or Apple Maps or Ordnance Survey Maps all will provide coordinates uh, but they're not in the format that we need to enter them into the Garmin Navigator which needs them in degrees, minutes and seconds. So I did find this handy little website gpscoordinates.net and if we scroll down the page here uh, it gives us an entry where we can put a place name. So if we put Froome in, which is one of our turning points, and say get GPS coordinates, not only do we see where it's found on the map, and we can see that by default it gives us uh, the decimal notation for the for the lat and long, which, which won't work in the navigator. Um, but we can also see down here that we get the result in degrees, minutes and seconds. So if we note those down for all of our turning points, we can have all the information we need to build um, the information that's required to create the user waypoints in the navigator. So we now have all the information that we need to enter the waypoint into the Garmin navigator. And you'll see here that I'm using the Garmin GPS trainer just because it's a little bit easier to show the interface than trying to record it on the screen in the aircraft. And this is a Garmin GPS 175, but the, the 375, the 650s, even the 750s have the same interface, so it should be very familiar. So if we click from the main screen, we go into waypoint in information, and then we select create waypoint, which is a user waypoint, and we press on user identifier so that we can give it a name, 
and we'll call this very simply Froom. And we will enter its position. So if we enter it as north 51 degrees and it was 13 minutes and 46 seconds and I think I got it as around 14 minutes from the from the chart and then west 0, 0, 002 degrees 19 minutes and 12 seconds that we got and we can hit enter and enter we can put a comment on, on it if we like so north 51 west 2 is a clear enough example and we can just press the graphical edit button just to make sure it looks like we expect it to on the map which it does and then we hit create and in true blue peter fashion if we look at the list of user waypoints i've already created barnstable and clapworthy reservoir that we were going to use as turning points as well so now that we've entered all of our visual waypoints for our flight we can go into flight plan and the navigator already knows that we're at Kemble so we can then search for Froom and we can see by the orange dot that this is the the waypoint that we entered and then we can add the other waypoint which was Clatworthy Reservoir again orange dot so that we know that it's a waypoint that we recreated and then another waypoint which was Barnstable and then we want to go to New Key And there we have our flight plan. And just as we would normally do, we just go to the map. We can zoom right out and that looks like we created on our chart. And there we go, we're ready to fly. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. It's the first one I've done, so if there's anything you think I could do to improve them for the future, please just leave a comment. It's really helpful if you smash that thumbs up button at the bottom of the video if you liked it. And I will try and do some more of these in the future. The next one I'll look at is um, a way to take a route from Sky Demon. Um, and if you do have the Garmin Pilot software um, and, and the flight stream system in your aircraft, I'll show you how to get a route from Sky Demon through Garmin Pilot and into the GPS Navigator. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.